Well, we predicted the Bulls were going to win. They didn't, and the season is over. There's a big offseason ahead. There's a lot of questions that had to be answered. We're also going to look at what went wrong against the Miami Heat in the play-in tournament, and there's a lot. We have a jam-packed show today. Looking back on the regular season, the play-in, an offseason that's got a lot at stake on today's episode of Believe in Bulls here on the Believe Network, presented by BetOnline.ag. I am your host, Nick Schultz, alongside my partner, former Bulls Bench Bob member and Tennessee Vol C.J. Watson. C.J., one full season together in the books. It ended a little earlier than we thought it would have. I mean, I thought they were going to be the Heat. I was, actually, I was actually confident going into this game. But, you know, it's going to be an interesting few months ahead, I think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. One year goes by fast, you know, and I'm definitely uh, fun doing this podcast with you and uh, learning a lot and it's good to talk about the Bulls, but but it was definitely an up and down year, but, you know, always looking forward to the off season and next year. Talking seasons here for us. I mean, there's no game action for the Bulls, but we're, I mean, we're still going to be here talking playoffs and whatnot, but I, I like this talking season aspect. We talk about different rumors and possibilities and we're going to get into a little bit of that today and on the programming note at the end of the show as well for kind of how we're handling the off season. But first, a message from our sponsor, BetOnline.ag. BetOnline is your number one source for all your basketball info, stats, news, and scores. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest player reports for this year's pro basketball playoffs. BetOnline is always your sports information headquarters this season, as we have you covered for all your sports wagering needs. Basketball, MLB, NHL hockey, right to the to UFC and boxing. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to get your betting information, including live betting options and your favorite casino and card games. You can play right from your home. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Be sure to use our promo code BELIEVE to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's B-L-E-A-V. Get that 50% bonus at Bet Online. It's where the game starts. The playoffs are in full force. There's some really entertaining matchups as well. And don't forget, we have an official t-shirt of our show, Jordan Pippen 98, The Last Dance, exclusively at shop.believe.com. There's a lot of great stuff there, including this hat. If you want to rep one of these, which I've been wearing a lot lately because I need a haircut, shop.believe.com is your place for that to support all the shows on the network the official shirt of our program though jordan pippen 98 the last dance shop.believe.com the link is in my twitter and instagram bios all right let's rip the band-aid off here mm-hmm. heat 102 bulls 91 heat ended the game on a 15 to 1 run the bulls got torched by chicago's very own oh, not chicago's very own he's from the suburbs but max Struess put up a big night once again the bulls failed to win four straight games season's over it looked like they were going to maybe pull it off. They didn't. It feels like that game summed up the season. Yeah, I think so. I was very confident going to this game. I uh, very, very high on them trying to win four in a row, uh, which they haven't done all season. And obviously, you know, still didn't, still didn't, still didn't do. So hopefully they'll try to, you know, do that again next year. But uh, just a lot of de- defensive breakdowns. Uh, I think they should have left Drummond in the end of the game uh, to finish out the game instead of putting Booch back in. Uh, just my personal opinion. Uh, I thought he had better chemistry with the guys on the court. He was giving a better effort, I thought. Um, so that was that's kind of just my my take. I also think Kobe White should have closed the game too. He yes, he and Alex Caruso were the only two Bulls to make a three. Zach yeah. went over six. Like if you've got a guy with a hot hand, I don't know why he's not closing that game. Like it, yeah. was, it felt like a failure on all fronts: offense, defense, on the court, coaching. It feels like everything kind of fell apart at the worst possible time. Yeah, yeah, right when you needed the the biggest game of the year, I feel like uh, you know a lot of defensive breakdowns. Uh, like you said, three point shooting was horrendous, <laughs> which we already knew going into the game. But uh, you know, and the other team, you know, shot lights out from the three. So um, I just didn't understand the game plan, maybe. But uh, like you said, it's just a, a a game that they could have won. That I thought they were still going to win, even you know throughout the game. I thought they were going to still make a comeback, make a push, but it just never happened. Look, the coaching matchup going in, we talked about it on our preview. I was really looking forward to seeing how Eric Spolstra and Billy Donovan would match up. Straight up, Bulls got outcoached. I'm a big yeah. Eric Spolstra guy. I said that last week. I think you can make a strong case for him to be the best coach in the game right now. You saw why. You had a Bulls team that was coming in with plenty of confidence, I'd say. They beat a team that they probably shouldn't have in Toronto. They come in, they're playing a better matchup in the Heat, and they went and they just flat out got out coached. I mean, like I said, there's no other way to put it. And now the offseason's here, and We knew this coming in, but there's a lot of questions now that they had to answer, and they didn't answer very well in the press conference after the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree also. Like, you know, I think a lot of the emotions are still, you know, with the the GMs or the president going to those press conferences. Um, I know for me personally, a a lot of uh, GMs and presidents said they would bring me back, but didn't bring me back after the playoffs. So, you know, no hard feelings, but, you know, it's just a business. But I think a lot of things are going to happen. A lot of things are going to shake up, and this team, I think, 
needs a kind of a roster revamp. Yeah, and we, we're going to talk about some ideas here. I just can't get over the fact that so many flaws were ex- exposed in that game. Like, I know the Heat are a great defensive team. We know that. It's Spo. He coaches defense. I'm not, he's not Tibbs level, I'd say. I mean, you, yeah. you, you'd you know that. Like, he's not, right. he's not Tibbs level with defense. But, I mean, he's still a great defensive coach. The three-point shooting is the thing that stands out to me. The Bulls went eight for 28 as a team. And I say as a team, Kobe White and Alex Caruso made all eight. And right. Caruso, I think, what, Caruso had the first 12 points or something? I think something so, like yeah. that? Yeah. Like, it was all, Al- it, it was Alex Caruso versus Max Drews for the first quarter. I did not expect that. And yeah, I mean, it, I don't know. Yeah, me neither. I think uh, my my whole thing is how do you leave a guy like Max Struess that wide open every time, you know? And I think it's just overhelping a guy. I was watching the game and Pat Beverly was out there roaming around, just leaving guys open. I'm like, what are you doing? But, you know, uh, I, obviously I can say that, you know, watching from TV uh, is probably different playing on the court and, and uh, being in the game. So um, I can always, you know, say point the, point the finger or whatever, but I thought it was a game that they could have won like, and they should have won, I thought. Well, and you had the different perspective too. You've been, you played in those, type of games and watching as yeah. a player is so much different than watching as a fan. Like, I mean, I've talked right. to college guys about this too. Like I was talking to a guy a couple months ago, you played at Loyola. He's like, yeah, I was watching from the stands. He's like, I'm seeing things I didn't see when I played. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. You, you know that. So you, you see the game differently. Like with Pat, with Pat Bell, leaving a guy, if that happens, if someone rotates and they shouldn't rotate, like right. there's, that's why there's, when I say there's so many things that go wrong, there were a lot of things that all went yeah. wrong at once. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think it was just a, a mental breakdown. I thought I thought they were still on a high maybe from winning from Toronto and uh, just didn't, you know, kind of carry over to Miami. Um, and uh, maybe the MVP wasn't there at the game. That kind of maybe. That didn't uh, you help. Know, I think the Heat yeah. made all their free throws. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, the, the MVP wasn't there. That was the that was the golden ticket right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find. What did Miami do from the free throw line? Uh, Miami went 28 for 32 from the free yeah, throw we- line. They made their first 15. Like, yeah, we, we needed her that game. <laughs> I know. And I know she had her own game too. Okay. So like school wasn't the only reason she had her own game that day. So All like, right. it's understandable. You got to go. Who? Yeah, yeah. But even beyond free throws, Max Struess and Jimmy Butler combined for 62 points. That's a double revenge game. Cause Max Struess played for the bulls in the G league tore his ACL. They let him walk. And now he's whitened it up for 31 points in the play in. And yeah. obviously Jimmy's going to come out hot against the bulls every time. I mean, we, we knew yeah, yeah. that coming in, like Jimmy's going to yeah. Jimmy when he yeah, plays yeah. the Bulls. So those two, and Max Drews played at DePaul. He started, so his journey, he's from Romeoville, when I said from the suburbs, which is like a half hour from me, from Romeoville, started at Lewis University, which is, I think, D2. And then he transferred to DePaul, and now you see him in the NBA. Right. That type of revenge game that just adds more fuel to this fire. I think that's why the fan base is reacting even more to this game than I thought they would. Right. Just because you had Max Drews in your system, and Jimmy Butler is, we know that situation. Yeah. You let them both get away and they come back to haunt you. Yeah. And you know, you know, like you said, Jimmy Butler was not going to go out losing to the Bulls <laughs> and, no. and not. And uh, Eric Spolson was going to have his team ready, uh, you know, regardless if they lost the last game or not. He was going to have them focus and, you know, the game plan was going to be tight and legit. And, you know, they're going to come out here and ready to play. And that's what, exactly what they did. And you see that also, you know, carry on to the, the first game of the the playoffs versus the Bucks. You know, they surprised a lot of people. Obviously, Giannis was hurt, but, you know, they surprised a lot of people with game one. Yeah. Miami went out and won. I mean, I, we know if the Bulls would have been there, man, I don't even want to know how bad that would have gone. <laughs> like, I, I was that was my worry. Like, okay, if they can beat the Heat, which I thought, again, I was with you. I thought they would. Right. What's what's ahead in Milwaukee? And yeah, yeah. Uh, we saw what happened. Miami won the first game. Giannis got hurt. Not sure what. I think it, he could be back for game two is kind of what I'm gathering from Johns and Woj. There were so many injuries to keep track of that I kind of, they're all yeah. kind of blended together. Like you had Ja go down, you had Tyler Hero go down, which is big for Miami. Like right. so, the playoffs are in full swing. Miami's up one zero, but I want to keep this with the Bulls because this is going to be the biggest conversation of the day. The off season ahead. Our Terrace Karnaschovas' press conference, mm-hmm. not great. I just did not think mm-hmm. I, I was following through quotes. I I had so many spring football games to cover on Saturday. I think I covered five or six spring football games, and that was a lot of interviews at transcribers. Right. <laughs> I'm half following AK's presser, and I'm reading the quotes, and I'm like, it, it wasn't going to go well, just given the state of the team. Not right. a lot of confidence there. And I know he, blowing it up isn't an option, he said. I don't know if, they, if blowing it up is the right move for this team anyway. When I say blowing it up, I mean trade everybody and start fresh, fresh. Like, right. Moves have to happen, but – I mean, Vooch, Kobe, and Io are the biggest decisions this offseason. He expressed a desire to bring them back, but, you know, the business side of that. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like I said, I don't really take too much of these press conferences. Uh, like I said, a lot of emotions still flying high from from the loss and then just from the whole season. Um, but I, it, it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Um, like you said, three point shooting is a definite must. But you know, you always want to bring Vooch back. Um, uh, Kobe White also and Io. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Um, but I think moves have to be made to get this team back to you know playoff contention. I'm having deja vu because three point shooting was a need last year too. Right. <laughs> and they went out and got Goran Dragic and Andre Drummond and yeah. drafted Dalen Terry. That didn't address the need at all. And finally, right. finally, Arturis acknowledged the need for three point shooting. Like, great. Thank you for finally pointing out that three point shooting is a need. We've only said that for 84 games this year. Like, right. Yeah. I just. Yeah, yeah. Is it taking that long to notice or taking that long to say it? I don't know. Right, yeah. And I feel like, you know, if, if, you are, if you're not a three, great three-point shooting team, just play to your strengths. That You don't have to go out there and shoot three right. you don't, or jack up threes like we've been saying the whole year. Like, just take good good three-point shots, uh, open shots. And if you're, you're better in the mid-range and play through the post, just, just do that. You know, you don't have to adapt to this new age basketball, but you do have to shoot some threes and make some threes. Right. Like, it, play your game. It's a simple game. Like Stacey yeah. King always says, Play through if Vooch is hot, keep it with Vooch. If Demar's hot, keep it with Demar in the mid range. Like yeah. you can, and then just turn it into defense. The defense came a long way this year. I feel like that was one of the one of the positives of the year. Is but beginning of the year it was like Swiss cheese. Like now yeah. they were they played lockdown defense for the most part, and then you know Miami did Miami things and it just ended badly. Mm -hmm. But three point shooting is once again the biggest need this year. And it, let's not forget you need a point guard. Because yeah. they, I know our, our tourists said the line, oh, we're confident Lonzo's going to be back. The reporting is already out there from Shams that it, he's probably not coming back next season. So yeah, I'm not I confident. think need number one, I'm not confident either. <laughs> I, I think need number one, I'd, even, I'd put it above three-point shooting at this point. You yeah. need a point guard. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I would, you know, say both of them are, you know, one A and one B because oh, it's gonna, uh, oh, it's close. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you can see in that in that game against Miami where they turned the ball over a couple of times, and if you have a point guard that can hold the team steady, you know, make good passes, make good decisions, you know, a couple of those turnovers don't, you know, go to Miami and it doesn't cut the lead down. So if they can just keep the lead like that. They can win a game like that. Look, I stand by Zach Levine with the max contract, given how he finished the year. Yeah, he stunk it a little bit. And against Miami, that's a tough defense going up against. Over six from three is not great. Six to 21 from the field. I mean, he was, uh, I say only, only yeah. minus eight. But, right. you know, point guard Zach, enough. I'm tight. We saw the whole season of it. Yeah. Enough with point guard Zach. Let Zach be the catch and shoot three point guy he is. Let him drive to the basket. I, I don't want to see him. I agree with Patrick Beverly 100%. His job is not to pass. His job is yeah, to yeah. catch and shoot and drive to the rim. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You don't want to put too much responsibilities on your number one guy. You know, just make it, keep it simple for him, just like you said, um, and let him attack the basket, let him uh, shoot his threes, catch and, catch and uh, shoot threes, and just try to make plays for other people, but also not with the ball in his hands when he's starting it from you know 94 feet. Let him catch it in the three-point range and then go to work from there. Exactly. And if you get three-point shooting on your roster here and Kobe White is restricted free agent, you have to bring him back, right? Yeah, yeah. Like he felt like the odd man out beginning of the year. He felt like, and the analogy I make it, I love, I've been saying this a lot lately. Been, my, the Beatles are my favorite band. Like <laughs> you, you, you know, there's a fifth Beatle, right? Like there was no, I Pete, know that. Pete, was, Pete Best was the drummer before Ringo Starr. I like, know nothing about the Beatles. Felt, sorry. Oh, that's oh man. They're my favorite <laughs> band. That is my, that is my favorite band of all time. Well, close. The Beach Boys are up there too. Like okay. I, I'm, a, I'm an old soul. What can I say? Right, yeah. I haven't learned that already. <laughs> I'm an old soul, but you know, the, the Beatles, you, it looked like Kobe white was kind of like the odd man out beginning of the yeah. year. Now he's like, okay, he needs to be part of this because yeah, yeah. he got them. He made some big shots. He kept them in games when he, when they probably shouldn't have been in games, mm -hmm. restricted free agent. I thought beginning of the year, maybe he'd be trade bait. Keep right. him. I think they need to keep him for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's a, a good piece for your team. Young still, uh, like you said, a great three point shooting and uh, definitely can help you stretch the four. Another guy who can knock down three. So he's definitely, you know, one of my books that I would definitely keep, you know, whatever he wants, you got to try to give it to him and uh, match his value out there in the open market. Well, and he's not just a three point specialist. Like he, yeah. he made strides defensively. He made strides with his ball handling. He made strides yeah. with his passing. Like, he took the leap that he needed to take after they turned down his option. Like yeah, yeah. When, when that happens, you can do two things. One, you can either put the chip on your shoulder, channel it into motivation, have the year like he had, or yeah. it'd be the opposite where you struggle. Like he, yeah. he had the chip on his shoulder, went out, performed. And I think he played himself into a really good deal. It just depends on if they can 
meet the market price because the salary cap situation right. is not great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you said, is uh, he definitely you know got better throughout the season. I thought confidence got better, got better, and um, uh, he's only he's only gonna get better. I feel like you know he's a uh, his, his uh, ceiling is you know still up there. Um, definitely can get a little bit better in ball handling and making decisions for others. But um, for right now, all you need to do is really catch and shoot and and, and play defense. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's gonna be the biggest key. So the two, it's tough because the three that the the big three to use that phrase. This offseason, you've got Vooch is an unrestricted free agent. you got Kobe and Io are restricted free agents. Those are three big decisions you have. And the salary cap situation, shout out to my guy, Bulldog Anderson, NBC Sports Chicago, for projecting the salary cap. I don't know how he does this. <laughs> His projection had $16 million mm-hmm. in salary cap. That's it. That's not a lot of money when you have yeah, this yeah. many needs on the roster. You've got big decisions there. So I, I hate to put it like this. But if it comes down to keeping two of these three guys or even one of these three guys between Vooch, Kobe, and Io, who do you leave out? Who do you say we have to part ways with? Oh, uh, yeah, it's tough. I mean, you can't part ways with Vooch, I guess. I mean, I mean, you can, but I mean, he's a big piece to your team also. <laughs> and uh, yeah. but I mean, you can do like, you know, like the Heat do, you know, find a find a guy uh, for a cheaper price in the in the G League and uh hopefully he's a shooter and not a catch and shoot uh player like maybe like a Max Strauss um type like that and uh that could really still, you know, benefit to uh, having on your team. Yeah, I mean, you need the three point shooting in Kobe. I think I think Io is still going to be a really good player. Like I know people are down on him. He had the he had he wasn't as great as he was to burst onto the scene as a second round pick as a rookie. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, he's still proved he can be a depth piece, and I think he can learn. I think he took some strides too. Yeah. Like, uh, but if it comes down to those, I mean, I know a lot of people are saying maybe it's time to move on from Vooch. It depends on if you can pay him. First of all, right. like I, he had a good offensive year, but he's still the defense is a concern. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely lacking. Like I said, I would have played Drummond at the end of that game because I, I thought the chemistry you. chemistry was better. He gave a little more effort, I, I thought, than Vooch. Uh, I'm not sure just from just from my perspective, uh, but. Uh, Vooch is still a, a great scorer from the mid post from three um, in the uh, elbow area. So great passer still. Um, still one of the best bigs to me in the NBA. So you gotta, you can't just, you know, just let him walk for free. <laughs> right. And I think too, like people talk about, oh, Drummond would have been tired playing that many minutes. I think you play Drummond until he gets tired. Yeah, for and sure. That's yeah. when you put in Vooch. Like you don't need to play Drummond the whole fourth quarter. Yeah. Like play Drummond until he's out of gas. Like you've got to, yeah, yeah, sure. it, it's win or go home. Like yeah, don't, these, don't play the game like that. You've got to use him till he's done. Yeah. And these guys are some of the top athletes in the world. If he's, if he's that tired, he should have been working to get in shape the whole, the whole season. I feel like. Right. And, and that's, <laughs> he, not, that's him saying that's fans on Twitter. Right, yeah. Justifying it. But <laughs> right. Like, and, and is he only 29? Andre Drummond? I think he's pretty long young. Yeah. Like it feels like he's been around forever. Like, yeah, I know, someone, right? someone tweeted that. I'm like, no, nah, he's not 29. He, I think he is like, yeah. feel like he's just been around for, it, he's been everywhere yeah he left school pretty early i think like maybe sophomore yeah. year maybe so yeah he's definitely like still that. young yeah yeah like and i don't i think he was, was he a two-year deal for cheap was he a cheap one year i can't remember what his contract situation is yeah but i mean that's just another decision you have to make and let's also not overlook the fact that i mean as we were getting ready to record the bulls had a tiebreaker in the lottery odds so they have a 1.8 percent chance of the number one pick in victor Wembanyama. now i don't know what that means for the top four to keep that pick but looking at the odds here barring a let's see quick math 98.2 percent chance they don't get the number one pick i'm not banking on them having a draft pick so outside of a miracle you don't have a draft pick this year because you gave up the second rounder than tampering i already brought up the 16 million dollars that you had to spend in the salary cap this is a really bad situation when you're coming off a year like this and you have to make improvements it just feels like there's going to be a lot of moves that are made in terms of like trades and everything yeah. like that. I mean, I don't think Arturo's kind of show, but can sit on his hands like he's done the last couple off seasons. Yeah, no, you can't do it this, this off season. Cause you, especially if you want to get back to playoff contention and, uh, and you said the roster needs to improve and you're trying to do that for the, for the team and for the fans. So he definitely has to make some moves and some, uh, some good ones at that to get this team back, uh, back in the playoffs. Now I know when he came in, when AK came in, he made those big, moved you know he signed Lonzo he signed DeMar he signed Caruso he turned it he took this team from nothing to I know what I know they backed into the playoffs that year but the reality is he took them from nothing to a playoff team like he came in like a lion 
now he doesn't have that ability to make those big moves because he mortgaged all his draft capital. Right. Like, and the Vooch trade was him too, which safe to say, I, I know I'd say I, if you could do it again, maybe you wouldn't give up as many draft picks, but <laughs> the Bulls lost the trade is the moral yeah. of the story there. Like Vooch, and even if they bring Vooch back, you can't use that trade as a reason to bring back Vooch given your salary cap situation. Like you have no draft picks to go out and make a big splash if somebody, <clears throat> Trey Young, requests a trade. <laughs> like, and I mean, that's wishful thinking. Like it would right. require bringing another team in to get the draft capital part. Like right. you are in a terrible spot, but you still have a goal of making the playoffs. I don't know how they're going to be able to do all this. Yeah, I don't either. They're kind of restricted in, uh, in the moves that they can make, I feel like. Um, so I think you just got to work on uh, basketball experience and getting your guys that you have on your roster, getting them better, um, working over the summertime, you know, and really improving improving their game so they can help out next season. Um, so, uh, like I said, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Uh, I don't see a lot of moves being made. I don't know, but hopefully they can just keep the guys they have on their roster, you know, and, and just get better. And one other thing you have to point out is DeMar is due for an extension because he's going into the last year of his contract. If he asks for a change of scenery, and I don't right. know if he'll necessarily do that, but I mean, it's you have to look at every possibility here. Yeah, yeah. You got to put everything he, on the table just in case. <laughs> right. So if if DeMar asks out, what are you going to do then? Like, I – and when you don't have a draft pick, you have to get a first-round pick from that. You can't just trade him for a second. You need a right. first. Like yeah, yeah, too many tough decisions coming yeah. up. I'm I'm glad I don't have to make these tough decisions. We can just sit yeah, here with and you. talk talk about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't want to be in that position. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough, and they got a lot of things to think about, uh, a lot of predictables, you know, unpredictable. So it's gonna be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, interesting is the big word. Like, and even early impressions from you know our tourist is presser and for. Where where was Mark Eversley? Why is Billy Donovan out there with AK? <laughs> like I want to hear from both guys who are making this calls right. because I, I Billy Donovan has taken so many questions that are out of his control when it comes to the roster yeah. and everything. He doesn't have a say in that. He's got to go coach. He's got to play the hands he's dealt. Right. AK is the one putting this together. Eversley is the one putting it together. I'm glad AK was there, but where where was Mark Eversley in this? Like, yeah. And that's my media hat on, like me taking you as a reporter. Like I didn't want to. We heard from Billy Donovan all year. I wanted to hear from Mark. I want to hear from Eversley. And yeah. I don't know how many more times that's going to happen because if they don't have a draft pick, you're not going to hear from AK on draft night unless they trade into it because they wouldn't have done anything. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's an interesting point that I have the guy not there and, um, and, and have the head coach there talking instead. So um, it's probably interesting to see um, maybe AK makes all the decisions. I don't know. I'm sure he gets some input from, uh, from Mark, but it's interesting not to have him there. It kind of maybe spells uh, catastrophe. <laughs> I mean, looking at the draft position too, like this tweet just came through on my tweet that I hear from Will Gottlieb at CHGO. The Bulls' first available second round pick, I'm not talking first, I'm talking second round pick, is in 2026. Yeah, like you're, you're relying on first round picks. Like, right. I mean, don't, I, if I say relying on first round picks, that's a tough problem to have. Ask Sam Presti mm -hmm. about that. But, you know, you, your draft position, you mortgage so much. Yeah. And for what? Yeah, you really get anything back in return, and I'm sure you thought you would, when you give give away those draft picks, you, you know, you'd be in, you know, six or seven seed every year, you know, still trying to fight for a championship. But obviously, those uh, that's not how it ended up. But I feel like you, like you said, they probably gave too much away, and they had to do it all over again. They probably wouldn't. And I give credit to them for not doing the Gar Pax thing, where Gar Pax for the next eight years. I'm not exaggerating. Mm -hmm. Oh, if Derek didn't get hurt, things would have been different. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad we didn't hear. If Lonzo didn't get hurt, things would be different. If Lonzo yeah. did get hurt over and over, like I'm sure they'll use that. Like they, you bring up that hope of Lonzo coming back. And I'll, I'll say it for discussion purposes. If Lonzo doesn't suffer that knee injury, that whole roster is completely different because you have someone tying it all together. Yeah, yeah. With Lonzo out, that's why I say you need a point guard. If you can bring in a solid point guard, and I'm not even talking. I know I mentioned Trey Young earlier as a possibility. It's because I think he's going to ask out of Atlanta. Just reading yeah. the rumors. This is not me reporting anything. This is just right. me being a fan and over anxious. <laughs> But if a guy like that's out there, I don't think you're going to get a guy. You need someone solid who can just run the point and make a three when you need him to. Like you yeah, need yeah. three point shooting and a point guard are going to be where things stop and end this off season. After that, who knows? Yeah, yeah. You just need someone to hold the ship until Lonzo gets back. You know, if he comes if back he and comes back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the that's the that's the whole plan. You just try to uh, make it until then, and never know when that is. Probably a year, maybe even more. So. If you can find someone steady uh, for a good price that's, you know, experienced, uh, has a has the respect of uh, players and coaches and can get the job done. 
Yeah, and I mean, this is going to be part of the bigger discussion. We're going to have all offseason, and I teased a programming note at the top of the show. Now that the season's over for the Bulls, we're going to be down to just once a week. So every Tuesday, we'll be in your favorite podcast platforms, Apple, Spotify, wherever. We're going to be talking Bulls, talking general NBA. We're going to, and there's going to be a lot more of these. Like, there's a lot of stuff we didn't get to today that we're going to get to next week. Like, because the, these types of conversations are going to have to happen all off season in terms of what's yeah. next for Demar, what's next for Zach. Where's Vooch going to go? What are they going to do with Kobe and Io? And I just go back. That's a terrible salary cap position too. Your hands are tied, but it gives us plenty to talk about in terms of what's feasible, what's not feasible for this team. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And yeah, like you said, their hands are definitely tied. And you can't keep everyone, so it's going to be hard to uh, to cut ties with some people that you probably really want to keep, and then others that you want to keep, and you you probably have to keep. So just for the betterment of the team. So it's going to be. Uh, definitely, you know, probably disappointing as a fan to see some players not come back, obviously. Um, but, you know, like you said, it's a business, and uh, I'm sure the players know that firsthand when they uh, get get drafted or, you know, get into the team. Yeah, and I mean, this is part one of our discussion here. This is going to continue next week and the week after. We're also going to be recapping the playoffs and everything. The playoffs are obviously still going on. We didn't get to much of it today because we, pre- we had more pressing things to talk about <laughs> closer to home. And I mean, it tell it just says enough. There's so much to get to that we didn't get to it all today. Right. Like we will, we'll get to more next week. We'll recap the playoffs. We're going to wrap up today's this, this week's episode. Go back to weekly of believe in bulls are on the believe network presented by BetOnline.ag. 50% welcome bonus with that promo code BLEAV. And by our shirt, Jordan Pippen, 98, the last dance, shop.believe.com. CJ will pick this up with part two of the Bulls offseason plan, if there is a plan, right. next <laughs> week. And we'll talk about some playoffs as well. And, you know, a little bit more spaced out here for some broader discussions. Yeah, yeah definitely uh, looking forward to it and then, uh, see what the, the moves they're making and uh, just enjoying the rest of these playoffs. And don't worry, we'll get the playoff predictions and stuff as things go on too. We'll get the predictions. We'll do some reactions. It's just right now there's a lot more that we have to react to close to home. <laughs> but we'll see everybody back here next week. Again, just a programming note back to weekly. We're not doing twice a week. We'll be down to once a week throughout the off season. Stay tuned for more hard hitting stuff about what the hell the bulls are going to do next. <laughs> see everybody next Tuesday.